Board of County Commission is now back in session. Next on the agenda will be Ms. Amy Kelly, Board of Adjustment Report. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we have our Board of Adjustment Recommendation Agenda. Um, item one is a recommendation for approval, unanimous. It's a consideration of a request for a 15-foot variance off of Magnolia Street to construct a garage on an existing slab located at 605 Alligator Drive, Lots 5 and 6, Block 1, Sun and Sands, Unit 2. Request submitted by Thomas Weigand. Um, he's the applicant. Um, they have an existing slab. Um, it's closer to uh, Magnolia Street, and they're hoping to um, be able to utilize the existing slab um, It's in this location but it is um, only 15 feet um, from the, um, 10 feet off of the Magnolia Street. So they're requesting a um, variance for 15 feet into the um, property line off of Magnolia Street. Where is it a vote? So move. Second. Uh, got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Burke, second by Commissioner Jones. Okay, all, item number, oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, that passed unanimous. Okay, number two, we have a recommendation for approval. It was unanimous. Consideration of a request to construct a lumber tree 20 feet into the west side property line off of South Franklin Street. Um, property described as 268 Highway 98, East Point Franklin County, Florida. Request submitted by Oliver Sperry Renovations and Construction, Inc., agent for Taylor's Building Supply. Pleasure to vote. So moved. Second. Got a motion on floor by Commissioner Jones, second by Commissioner Perry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, that passed unanimous. Item number three, um, it was a recommendation for denial. It was a unanimous. In August 2002, um, the Board of County Commissioners made a um, set of precedent that if you ask for a variance into the critical habitat, then you will be limited to a thousand square foot footprint for the house. Um, this consideration of a request was for a five foot variance into the critical habitat zone to construct a 1,343 square foot single story home located at 37 Carousel Terrace, Lot 2, Holiday Beach, Unit 1, request submitted by Wayne and Susan Johnson, applicant. Um, the reason why we um, requested to, to deny this was because it was 343 square feet above what the county set a precedence back in 2002 with. So. The applicant was aware, um, but he did go forward with asking for the request. Motion to take the uh, board of adjustments recommended now. I got a motion on float by Commissioner Perry. Second. Second by Commissioner Jones. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Just a comment. I think this is an excellent example of when potential buyers are wanting to buy property in Franklin County. I really think you should take the hand of your realtor and come to our building and planning department before you make such commitments. I think we, we are, we're using a standard of practice here. That's why our property values remain strong for the reason we adhere to standards of practice and our building and planning department is that standard of practice and I think it's important that buyers get educated before they make commitments. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes unanimous. Okay, our Board of Adjustments is complete, so we'll go to our Planning and Zoning um, agenda. Okay. Um, we have a critical shoreline application. It was recommended for approval unanimous consideration of a request to construct a single family residential dock located at lot two Savannah Cove, 1269 East Gulf Beach Drive, St. George Island, Franklin County, Florida. The proposed access walkway for the dock will be 275 feet by four foot wide with a 12 by 20 terminal platform and two 12 by 20 boat lifts. This application has all state and federal permits requested Request submitted by Dan Garlic, Garlic Environmental Agency, agent for Joseph Lawrence. The applicant has a house. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Jones, second by two, Commissioner Paris and Commissioner Master. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Paris unanimous. Item number two, we have a final plat application. 
The recommendation for approval was unanimous. Consideration of a request for final plat approval of a one unit subdivision formerly known as lots one and two Chateau de la Grange lying in section 22 township nine south range six west St. George Island Franklin County Florida. Request submitted by Barbara Sanders agent for Corey and Deborah Reynolds Johnson applicants. Motion to approve the request. Got a motion on floor by Commissioner Jones. Second. Second by Commissioner Massey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Got passed unanimous. Okay. Item number three is um, a part of our land use and rezoning applications. This recommend this is, was a recommendation for approval of, of a public oh, I'm gonna stutter of a public hearing, three to one vote in favor. Chairman Murphy recused himself and did not vote during this request. Um, he has a familiar re relationship. Um, consideration of a request for a land use change of 1.04 acres from commercial recreation to commercial fishing and a rezoning. This is just a rezoning. Um, there was a, an error in the planning and zoning agenda from C3 commercial recreation to C1 commercial fishing. Property lying in section six, township seven south, range one west, 127 Harbor Circle, Alligator Point, Franklin County, Florida. Request submitted by Paul and Stephanie Parker. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Goy, uh, it's Im important that I recuse myself in this particular deliberation because I have a business relationship with Mr. Parker um, relative to sale of property. So okay. I'll have to stand by, and not vote. Okay, you got to get with the lawyer. Time I've already paper. gotten counsel. Go ahead, Mr. Sir. Chairman, if I might. Uh, Commissioner Bolt has disclosed this uh, business relationship and tracks relationship with Mr. Parker to me. I uh, double checked the statute during the break, and in fact, he does have a voting conflict, and I've advised him of such, and he is now announcing publicly, as he is required to do, that he has a voting conflict, the basis for the conflict, and he will be filing uh, the form that Mr. Marone will be filling out for him within the next 15 days and file it with the Commission on Ethics and with the clerk. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Park. Good morning, Commissioners. Good I'm just here to answer any questions. I can tell you what we're working on if you'd like, if you have any questions. Mr. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Just clarifying. Amy, what you're asking today is permission to take it this to a public hearing, correct? That's, That's correct. correct. Yeah. Motion to approve. Second. We've got a motion on floor by Commissioner Jones, second by Commissioner Master. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes vote with Commissioner Burt oh, recusing himself. Okay, item number four is a recommendation for approval of a public hearing. It was unanimous. Mm -hmm. Consideration of a request for a land use change of 7.68 acre parcel from single family residential and single family home industry to commercial business and a rezoning from R1 single family residential and R4 single family home industry to C2 commercial business. Property lying in section 22, township 8 South, range 6 West. Request submitted by James Ward, applicant. So moved. Second. Got a motion on floor by Commissioner Masses, second by Commissioner Jones, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes unanimous. Also, um, we have a public hearing um, that was scheduled for 1030. Um, the applicant has withdrew it, so we're not going to have the, um, the public hearing this morning. Okay. Okay. That's the one we get. That was, that was your 10 30. Yeah, we kept it down here so the, uh, everybody know we were supposed to have it, right? Yes, That's correct. Advertised, uh, forward, so I have to leave it on the agenda and let everybody know it was drawn by the applicant. Okay. Thank <clears throat> you. Okay. Um, we also have an appointment for our planning and zoning um, board okay. um, in Mr. Noah Lockley's district. His name is Alex Gravonsky. Oh, yep. then I will excuse myself. Thank oh, you no, so much. Um, okay, so item number five applies to um, uh, planning and zoning. Uh, Mr. Toronto, Joey Toronto currently sits on your planning and zoning uh, forestry seat. Mr. Toronto informed staff that due to his 2020 schedule, he will not be able to attend all of the 2020 PNC meetings. However, Mr. Mr. Toronto, being the good public citizen that he is, has found another forestry officer, Mr. A Alex Skrobonsky, is that correct? 
best that I can do, that lives in Chairman Lockley's district and is willing to serve in PNZ. If the board has no objection, Mr. Skravonsky would serve as an alternate, which would allow him the opportunity to gain a better understanding of PNZ until Mr. Toronto is ready to step down. Now, Mr. Toronto is willing to serve as an alternate in the future, as when his schedule allows, especially when <coughs> additional members are needed to meet the quorum requirements. I will inform the board when Mr. Toronto and Mr. Skravonsky are ready to switch seats. Uh, I need a motion to appoint Mr. Skravonsky to the Planning and Zoning Commission as an alternate member. So I move. Second. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Master, second by Commissioner Perry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Both of them willing, right? I mean, y'all yeah. done talk to them and everything? Sir. Okay. Yeah. Where's my name going? Oh. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Keep up. Stuff, I tell her keep up the good work. Okay. Next on the agenda will be RFP, RFQ, ordinance. Not proposal. There's no, the commissioner, there's no money amount of these. It's, it's going to be rated by a committee. And Attorney Shula likes me to list the names on the committee, which will be myself, your road superintendent, Mr. Howard Neighbors, and Ms., uh, and Lauren. Why does Lauren name is, his last name escapes me? Liberto. Liberto. <laughs> Really? Uh, I know, really, um, from the planning, from the finance office. That's going to be the review committee. Uh, we'll review the, the three packages and, and uh, bring back a recommendation. We'll rank them and bring it back to you guys at the next meeting. Okay? And this is actually for CEI services for the sidewalk and minor drainage improvements of County Road 67, also known as Tallahassee Street, uh, over there in Cairo. Mm -hmm. um, I think it goes from... Got from Avenue A northward to Crooked Creek Road in Carabel, if I read that correctly. It's this project is federally, federally funded with assistance from FDOT and the Federal Highway Administrative Administration. Okay, so the first group is uh, Dewberry Engineers. They have a Port St. Joe office. And I think that's all I'm required to say at the moment. There's no pricing, no cost, no, no money amount in here. These will be reviewed for their qualifications. Oh, okay. okay. Michael, what does CEI stand for? Construction Engineering Inspection. Okay. Okay. Correct? <coughs> Commissioner, you didn't tell me that was going to be on the test now. <laughs> I was asking this kind of question. All right. Next is... is DRMP. And they, they have a Tallahassee address. Remington Green Circle, DRMP. And the final group is AE Engineering Incorporated. I see everything else here. I got an email, a cell number, but Where's the hood and then where from? address. I'm sure it's in here somewhere, commissioners. A and E, A and E. Yeah. A and E Engineering Incorporated. Was it on the <coughs> Sir? Was the return address on the one? C. Mariana. Mariana. Mariana, Florida. All right. Okay. Good uh, job, Lori. And that's the three. So, what I would need from the board is a motion uh, turning, forwarding this to the review committee for review and ranking, and we'll come back to you with a recommendation at your next meeting. Second move. Got a motion on floor by Commissioner Massa. Second. Second by Commissioner Parrish. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? <laughs> Pass unanimous. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Okay. Next on the agenda will be Mr. David Walker, Wing CEO request. Mr. Nicole Shipping, Wing Plan Operator Director Report. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. David Walker, Wing's interim CEO. I have two requests um, for you this morning. Um, 
the Weems um, Hospital Board has approved the annual 2020 annual budget, and we would like for you to approve it as well. Um, our budget is a little over $15 million. I just want to clarify for the public and the audience that um, no property tax or ab alarm tax goes to the hospital operations, only the sales tax. And that sales tax um, provide for operations for the hospital as well as the two clinics. And then the ab alarm property tax goes to EMS. So I just want to make that clarification. Okay, Clay, is there a vote on that? Move. Second. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Perry, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimously. Secondly, um, many of you know that our um, money market account has was deplenished, you know, a little. And so we're requesting that somehow we can, um, with your assistance, begin to build that back up and maybe, you know, put some funding um, into that account. And then if we need it at the hospital, you know, we'll go through the county coordinator and assistant um, county finance officer uh, for that request. And so I'm just forecasting, you know, that, you know, maybe in the later months we may need to pull from our savings account. But right now, um, it's, you know, we, we're a little short. Well, it's $123,000 in it, but we want to make sure that we continue to build that account up. Well, they need, we always had some in there, and I'd like to see something. Mm -hmm. Well, our county attorney just uh, reminded me of something. It was how many years ago did they approve actually funding? At some point, that was never used. It has to be over, yeah, at least two years ago. Mr. Chairman, if I may go ahead. My recollection is the board at some point in the past, the record and the clerk will have to confirm. I mean, it has been a while back, but my understanding was that the board had authorized up to five pay periods I think was the the um, the language that the board had authorized now you know as needed without having to come back to the board how many of those five draws if any have been taken I, that I don't know so I think that I can ask a question none none of those five oh. draws have been taken because oh my bad okay. um, I have it actually right here um, at the emergency meeting on December 30th 2015 the board authorized emergency advancement of $100,000 on 12-30-15 and authorized additional payments as requested to a maximum of $180,000 times three. Uh, they transferred $100,000 on 125-16. Uh, they transferred $92,000 on 211-16. They transferred $35,000 on 222-16. Transferred $70,000 on 3 9 16. Transferred ninety thousand on five eighteen sixteen. Transferred forty eight thousand on six one sixteen. Um, less a repayment of fifty thousand on six seventeen sixteen. Uh, transferred one hundred twenty five thousand on seven twenty five sixteen. Um, so that was actually about eight hundred ninety thousand in emergency transfers as of nine thirty sixteen. Um, and we received a payment of one hundred fifty thousand on four twenty seven seventeen. And another fifty thousand on seven twenty seventeen. Um, so just to kind of give you guys a history uh, of those transfers, but that was quite a long time ago. That was yeah. But uh, so there's no more payments on it. We we voted. We voted that that all that was hospital money. Yeah, I think she's talking, you're talking about something different from what the chairman is referring well, to. Well, that yeah. was the amount that you all, off, I mean, that's the same authorization that you're talking of, I believe, isn't it, Shuler? That's I just have a recollection. There's a re reason we keep public records, but I remember there was an authorization of up to, like, five pay periods without a need to come back to the board. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I'm hearing about this live in the meeting. I that was when Mike record. Cooper was here. Exactly. Yeah, right. that's a, that was a and that's the same one? That would be the same one, but... Um, yeah. That's a long time ago. I don't. Yeah, no, I, was, I don't know that that would be like an open-ended. I was unaware that that even money was transferred based on that request. I know there was some prior to that. I didn't know. Um, well, anyway, it's still staying now, Mr. Hewitt. Well, the board authorized a certain number of draws. Now, how much of that, was, as I said, was taken out subsequent to that authorization? I don't ever. I'm not involved in those discussions, so I don't know if they've used all of those pre-authorized draws or not. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing something live this morning, but 
you know, perhaps the cleanest thing would be for the board <coughs> to um, either defer this and let us look at the record and come back with more complete information, or if there's a need to act this morning based on, I mean, do we need to act? No, no we don't need to act this morning. You know, it's just a forecast I would say defer maybe in let November. Us look at the record and report back at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, if the board remembers, you know, at, prior CEO that's like that's what I guess what got me a little upset because I had fought to set aside seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in a money market account and this is exactly what it was for for times yeah. like this and it was used for other purposes unknowing to to, to myself and, and to the Board of County Commissioners you know so um, what I still would like to see them have a, enough for an extra payroll just in case, case. Mm -hmm. yes I meant to date without coming back to the boat, we wouldn't have to have no special meeting. And we can go from there. So move. Yep. I got a motion on float by Commissioner Pear. Second. Second by Commissioner Burke. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, that passed unanimous. And that way, we'll check, we'll check the record and come up with a new plan or whatever we got to do, but we need them to be able to cover themselves just in case. And, and his request says if needed. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's if needed. I'm just forecasting. We're a month away from. Yeah, we're like yeah. two months away. Then you got May 2020, you know, three payrolls or whatever. So I'm just thinking ahead. You know, we may not need it, but just in case they do, in case we do need it. Mr. Chairman. Well, if you do, Mr. Walker, or just see the other guy in trouble because they used it without. Keeping it, well, maybe I should be Keeping saying. the board informed. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep yeah. the board informed. Yeah, and what I do, you know, before we even make the request, I, I notify Aaron and Michael, yeah. you know, yeah. and that way everything is clear and clean. I just want to tell you ahead of it, in advance. You know, we're not that's there a, yet. That's but a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Mr. Go Chairman, ahead. I just wanted to compliment all of that. You see, we just now made another pivot publicly. Now we have hospital transparency. Mm -hmm. Proactively, before we get into trouble, and, and this is, I think, a very defining moment this morning, and I appreciate you doing this. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate you. I have one other request, Nicole. Go ahead. Okay. Good morning, gentlemen. Nicole Cheppy. Good morning. We have right. one request for 5500 for regarding a masonry project uh, in, <coughs> in relation to the re-roofing. Uh, we've Please. searched for it, and this is we have one company that's willing to do the work. Pledge of the board. After looking at the photos provided by Ms. Shapey on, on some issues that we need to uh, have some masonry work done at the hospital, so moved. Second. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Parrish, second by Commissioner Jones. At them big holes up there, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all do? Okay, keep up the good work. Yep. Yes. Next on the agenda will be Ms. Deborah Belcher, um, CDBG Administrator. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Mm -hmm. Um I have one item for you today. Mm -hmm. um, we talked previously about some of the people who have the um, donated mobile homes and um, wanting to get the CDBG funded mobile homes. I have the first one um, proposed for you today. Annie and William Banks, 638 Ridge Road, um, had a mobile home donated by church and um, they qualify for a CDBG mobile home. And um, we have someone whose home was burned, not by the East Point fire, but by another fire. Um, Jason Millender. And uh, one of the issues that we had when we discussed this was if we're going to replace a donated home with a CDBG home, two issues. One is would the um, existing home go to someone who needed it uh, in a similar situation to either the East Point fire or something like that? Uh, and that is the case here. And the other issue was um, would the party that would receive the donated mobile home be able to immediately 
install it and at their expense on their land and that is also the case in this situation to the move. so moved second got a motion on the floor by commissioner master second by commissioner jones all in favor uh -huh. aye Thank, thank you, Ms. Boucher. All, thank all you very much. That pass you nothing. <laughs> thank you very much. That's it, unless you have something for me. How are you coming with that other project? Um, I got a <laughs> one piece of the information uh, that I needed, and I'll, I'll I'll be following up with that. Yeah, he, I'm getting calls. That they said he took care. Of, they said they took care of one of the things over in the coat house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta send you the taxes. Yeah. So they, I, can, I can check on that. Okay, well, get back with Michael on that, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Uh, next on the agenda will be Ms. Marcia Johnson, Clerk of the Court. I don't have a report this morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, ma'am. Next on the agenda will be setting in for Mr. Allen. Oh, no. No, no report from Allen today. Lucky no Allen. report? No. Okay. Allen had no report. So next on the agenda will be Mr. Michael Marone, county coordinator report. Okay. Any, uh, so we are, let's see here. This is, we did one through five. So let's get to... Item six, at your last meeting, I informed the board that Representative Schoff requested a list of the most important needs for the county regarding Hurricane Michael recovery. With board approval, I will submit the St. George Island Beach Berm project application, which I'll talk about later in the meeting, with, with backup documentation, as the number one rank project. The second rank item will be the request to open and convert the old FSU Marina and Alligator Point to a state managed boat ramp to allow agriculture oyster state leaseholders access to their leases. The letter we sent to the governor, his cabinet, and our legislative delegation will be included with that request. And our final mm -hmm. rank submission will be a request for the state to take back ownership and maintenance responsibility of Alligator Drive. I will include a supporting white paper created <coughs> by Mr. Frank McCombs group as they are working on the acquisition of properties around Alligator Drive. Uh, if the board has no other items they want me to include to Representative Schof, I'll do that uh, today or tomorrow. Um, I just need a uh, motion agreeing to the list in the order that I've presented to you here this morning. Pledge of the board. Motion to approve. Got a motion right. on the floor by Commissioner Jones, second by Commissioner Massey. That's that rule that they two up all the time? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll get a drive. It should have been way up down the list. They, I hope they hear them take it. Yes. Yeah. And Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I just want to emphasize in the white paper there's, you're submitting uh, to the state to consider taking over Alligator Drive. Yes. I've said it before, this county has been a great steward of that very dysfunctional and impaired road over the years. and. Uh, as we continue with the rebuilding project of Alligator Drive in that impaired area, I think it's a great testimony to the state. We're giving them something better back than what they gave us in years of care and outcome of construction. Mm -hmm. If show get that, he'll be the governor. <laughs> all right. All in, all in favor? Uh -huh. All right. All opposed, that pass you now. Item seven. I was informed that H.D. Harder and Son, Harders and Son, has been awarded the contract with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection to construct a living shoreline breakwater along the shoreline at the end of Milliner's Road. That should be Milliner's Road, Commissioners. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Anytime I say anything, anything should be Milliner's Road. During the project, Harders and Son will need to, to act to use the southern end of Milliner Road as their work area and will encompass the total beach area at the end of Milner Road as well as the portion of the southern side of the park. I didn't say that correctly. The northern portion of Milner Road from Patton Road to the Ainer entrance would be open and unobstructed to the public. Attorney Schuler and Mr. Bill Crittenden have conferred to discuss a contract indemnifying the county and promising to return 
Millender Road to its pre-closure condition. In addition, Attorney Shuler also recommends a certification of insurance, naming the county as an additional insured. A Hard and Son representative is here today, I hope. No? They said they were going to be. Uh, to answer any additional questions, and I will display the map that is attached to my report because this item is discussed. Let me open this up a little bit for you. So Attorney Shuler could kind of pitch in here because he's talked to them a little bit more than me. I think the barricades are right here. The entrance to Aner is right there. Entrance to that one house is right here. And there's another house up here. Stare me if I'm wrong, uh, Attorney Shuler. We're doing okay? Well, excellent presentation as usual, Mike. The two things that uh, I would like to cover is there's a requirement for signage at the, the intersection of uh, Millinder Street and Patton Drive, notifying people that the road is closed at a certain point, so maybe it will cut down on some of the, the through traffic, and to also provide a turnaround. But otherwise, I think that Mr. Marone's uh, explanation of the, 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 the contract is sufficiently complete. Mr. Chairman. Right. <clears throat> so when they're asking for a closure, you're talking about a temporary closure. Until mm -hmm. they get the break water done, then they yep. remove all barricades and the road go back to where it was? Yes, sir. So the wide circle is where the barricade could be, but there's actual staging area is further down right there. Yeah. Okay. Second. So moved. I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Parrish, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Now we running a little bit ahead you think they and they you said they pulled that head somebody here? maybe yeah i think i told them about 10 but if they if they come in um you can have it they, yes you can talk to them yes well okay. should have been talking to them we'll more call, than i have one so, of yeah. y'all well mr chair the board hasn't voted yet but if things go the way this thing be going i don't think they'll complain about a win when they were absent <laughs> uh, but okay. just for the public's uh, information follow up on uh, and flesh out what Commissioner Paris mentioned, the, the closure will begin on October 21st, potentially uh, a week late, towards the end of October 2019, and it will end on February the 28th, 2020, and they will also be providing some PSAs on the local radio station just to notify the public in addition to the road signage. Okay. But that they were, uh, this is obviously not their first rodeo. They were, you know, thoroughly prepared and engaged with the county and, and coming to a contractual understanding and holding the county harmless and, and, and protecting the public's interest. So it was a pleasure actually working with them. I'm going to leave this contract with Mr. Marone for the chairman's signature and uh, the signature of the, the company, uh, assuming that the board's will is to approve this request. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I pass unanimous. All right, item number eight. I attended a meeting about a week and a half ago where a local businessman stated that he would like to relocate and expand his business here in Franklin County. He's already in Franklin County, he wants to expand. He was inquiring about available grants and assistance from the U.S. Economic Development Administration. Mr. Greg Bidet of EDA, along with Mr. Ben Chandler, who's here today, and Ms. Caroline Smith, they're both of ARPC, were also at the meeting. Commissioner Paris came about halfway into the meeting. A lot of funding options and scenarios were discussed, but one consensus was reached that Franklin County is in need of an economic development plan without a plan and perhaps an economic development council. The county is unable to tap into any of the available economic development programs or funds to help current businesses expand or new businesses locate here in the county. With the assistance of Mr. Ben Chandler and Ms. Dana Crater of the International Economic Development Council, the county can receive a technical assistance EDA grant to help the county create an economic development plan and perhaps a council. This grant will cover the cost of travel, hotel, and meals for two volunteers. The first volunteer will meet with stakeholders, such as county commissioners, other elected officials, community leaders, etc., to recommend the makeup and size of the economic development council. The second volunteer will create a plan for the EDC that will be presented to the Board of County Commissioners. Mr. Ben Chandler is here today in case you have additional questions. If the Board is inclined to proceed with this grant, there's an MOU that will require Board action. I sent a copy to the MOU to Attorney Shuler for his review. So after we talk about it, if you're inclined to move forward, uh, yeah, we need a, a, a authorization to, to sign 
to approve the MOU and for the chairman to sign it. The only thing we are responsible for with this grant is providing like basically office space for them to meet with stakeholders from around the county, and this is people you you guys will probably recommend to help with this plan and help with this council. Keep in mind, commissioners, I know we've had a very bad experience in the past with this. The difference this time, I think, is that this is all under your control. You, they bring it back to you. You're getting this TA grant, you know, to, to help and assist you to make a decision which way you want to go, you know. And unless you have questions that uh, I can't answer, Mr. Chandler can ask, uh, answer. Um, Discussion. Any discussion on the board about this? Mr. Chairman, I have something, if I may. Go ahead. Ben, first, thanks for being here today. Thank you. Uh, just to compliment what uh, Mr. Marone is saying, all this development or any discussion that's going to be had, it's all going to come back to this board for final approval anyway, correct? Uh, absolutely. Okay. And uh, uh, Mr. Marone, Marone gave a, Let me a get great you uh, uh, Let me get explanation. Your name for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. For the record. My name is Ben Chandler. I'm with the Appalachia Regional Planning Council. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, his explanation really covered the base on, on this particular idea of a project. Uh, to drop back a little bit uh, more broadly on this, uh, this, is, uh, this is a very easy thing to take advantage of. It's a, it's a great resource to our communities that are um, dealing with the hurricane recovery and resilience process. Um, and this is a completely funded uh, opportunity from the Economic Development Administration. Um, and they have opportunities for folks to come in and out. Uh, we just need a little lead time to get them here to address any number of resiliency type strategies that you might have. This idea of an economic development plan and, and developing uh, the, uh, the roadmap for an economic development council was just one idea that came out of this. We could bring them in for a variety of things. Uh, to give an example, we're using them in other uh, areas of, of the nine county region that we serve. Uh, we're working with uh, Chipola College, for example. They're working on trying to expand plans for their workforce training. So we had a, a volunteer come in, uh, and, and that's really all that this is. This isn't even a grant application. We just, we'll, we'll get the, uh, the memorandum of understanding and uh, define a scope uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Marone at your direction and, uh, and, and for whatever you need. But going back to the example with Chipola College, uh, we had someone come in for a week to help them develop a strategy to make their workforce training facility what they want it to be uh, as part of a, another grant application to expand their facility. We're bringing in a second volunteer in, in the coming weeks to help them get a better handle and understand what their pipeline of students are, where are they coming from and where are they going to be able to place them so they can really back up and bolster their application. Um, we're using them in Liberty County to help as part of the long-term uh, recovery plan there. Um, and so there's, there's plenty of opportunities to bring them in. We can target a specific economic development strategy that you may already have that uh, I know uh, staff ha ha wears many, many hats and needs, needs uh, assistance to, 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 uh, to address many of the initiatives that you have. So this is an opportunity to bring in for that particular technical need, whatever it may be. And, and really, I think, uh, brought more broadly what we're even asking here is uh, allowing us as the council to have an opportunity to to work with you to maybe even see how we might be able to use this resource even more in depth and more targeted uh, and not just for the uh, economic development plan or or this process of potentially uh, developing a, an economic development council so it's something more broadly we can think about we just had some initial conversations and and we'd lo love to explore that further and also uh, see what how else we might be able to uh, assist through our organization thank you man. Hmm? motion to approve second I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Jones second by Commissioner Massa Mr. Chairman Go ahead. Um, and thank you yes. for being here today. Thank Appreciate you. you. Appreciate um, it. Can you give us some examples of what gains other counties have benefited from such councils and exact dollars, amounts, and outcomes? Wow. Uh, I, I, I can't, I'm not sure that I could go into that detail. Okay. Uh, we, I mean, we, we do work, I do personally in my, in my role, uh, 
I'm funded through the Economic Development Administration, my, my particular role with the council. And what I, I do um, uh, specifically as part of this recovery effort is uh, I've been working with the long-term recovery groups that are more citizen driven, as well as working with the uh, economic development organizations throughout the region. And I work pretty closely with Opportunity Florida, uh, which uh, you all are under their umbrella. So we've been trying to identify uh, viable projects throughout our region that we can uh, uh, push more f toward uh, the this limited time we have for funding through the disaster relief package uh, passed at the federal level. So we work with the Economic Development Administration specifically with their particular line item as part of that bill, uh, which is going to get spread pretty thin throughout our uh, eight state region. Uh, but uh, we're trying to identify projects within our region that can uh, bolster economic uh, recovery and resilience uh, uh, throughout. So, so we work with each and every one of our uh, economic development uh, councils and organizations, and, and we would love to be able to help uh, Franklin County uh, bring that same thing here. And we're offering these guys some housing or facilitating some, some office locations? Just, yeah, All they need is a place to set up yeah. shop for the time they're here. All their other expenses are paid for through the EDA. And then, you know, we have a grants coordinator that could link with this opportunity as well in okay. some way. Okay. Let me ask a question, sir. Say so. um, have y'all had any success now? Like, we in, Frank we in Franklin, we don't have an EDC. But uh, have y'all been other places that didn't have a economic development council and, and was y'all successful in helping them do things? Well, uh, another uh, example would be uh, in working with Calhoun County, uh, where we work directly with their Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it can be an organization at that level as well uh, to help advance strategies uh, that they have as well. I know uh, right now, for example, in Calhoun County, uh, the, the the plate is very full with trying to uh, administer not just the chamber, but the long-term recovery group there. So uh, we're looking at strategies there to help them as well on that, uh, using this resource. This is a new resource that uh, really only came about as a result of uh, the 2017 hurricanes, uh, uh, and uh, at least in our area. Uh, it's been established since Katrina uh, came through uh, years back. Uh, and it's a targeted volunteer service to come in and, and, and give recommendations and assistance. It's nothing that you're bound to uh, by any means, uh, and it's something that you use as a platform for developing the next level of, of strategies. Um, so we, we want to be able to use this resource to the you know, best we can. We have it until about 2020 when their funding runs out, and we can bring them in as many times as we need to. Well, inf information always good. Y'all ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Thank you. Ben. Thank you. So Appreciate much. it. If I may, item nine, commissioners, in an effort to start the process of complying with ADA requirements for the county's website, I've researched software for both agenda automation and ADA compliance. Based on that research, I'm recommending that the county purchase an annual subscription to Municode's meeting manager software. The software will reduce the need for costly conversion of documents as more meeting information will be entered directly into the cloud-based agenda system. The more information that's entered into the system will then reduce the number of attachments that will require the costly conversion process to comply with ADA requirements. The annual cost of the cloud-based software is $3,800. This agenda software will be used for uh, these meetings, planning and zoning meetings, and <coughs> adjustment agendas and minutes. We've been using Municode for codification of our ordinances for years. Just need authorization or payment of the annual subscription for this software. So moved. Second. Got a motion approved by Commissioner Perry, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. And as a side note, it'll put less gray hair in myself and Miss Lori Hound. Because some days, let me tell you. Item 10. Uh, DEO has forwarded the final draft of the agreement for the $750,000 Hurricane Michael recovery funds for, for signature. As Mr. Pierce and I have stated in previous meetings, the majority of these funds will be used as the county's match for the FEMA-funded Alligator Drive Repair Project. Once a firm match amount for this project is determined, the county will amend the scope of services with DEO and use the remaining funds for another project. 
I need approval and authorization for the chairman's signature on this agreement. Pledge of the board. So moved. Got a motion by Commissioner Perry, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Pass unanimous. Item 11, at your September 3rd regular meeting, the board authorized staff to negotiate with Genesis Health Incorporated for the design of improvements to County Road 38 from 13 Mile Road to Highway 98. This is the FDOT SCOP grant funded project. An agreement has been reached with Genesis Health to complete the design of the improvements for $343,000. Mr. Curington verified, that's the county planner, uh, verified that this amount is within the grant amount and we have met FDOT's consultants competitive negotiations act requirements. Staff recommends approving the contract and authorizing the chairman's signature. That's just for the design, right? Yes, sir. So I you the boo. Second. Got a motion on approved by Commissioner Perry, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? That passes unanimously. This board, at your September 16th regular meeting, directed staff to contact Roberson and Associates to request an engagement letter to perform a forensic accounting services for the Lanark Village Volunteer Fire Department for the 2018 and 2019 financial records. This request was based on a recommendation letter from the sheriff investigators. Mr. Robertson has submitted an engagement letter with a scope of work and a not to exceed fee of $5,000. Approval and authorize the chairman's signature on this engagement letter. So move. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Burke. Second. Second by Commissioner Massey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I got a question real quick. Go ahead. Uh, Michael, we uh, just voted to do this uh, audit of the mm -hmm. land But I also see where we approved a check going out to Land Art, St. James Volunteer Fire Department. That's the MSBU yeah, dispersion that we. MSBU distribution. That we is, that, is that the same funds that we are now going to perform an audit on? Y yes, sir. But I, who, I, who controls these funds? I don't know. Legally, we can stop it, and that's. Well, I'm not saying stop it. I'm asking you who controls it. Oh, it goes to the uh, same. It, it the says, same. The tax collector um, actually gives us a check, and we act, we deposit the funds into the MSBU trust fund, and then on a quarterly basis, we actually distribute the funds to the different fire departments. And okay. this one would have been the settle up for. Yeah. So we're not sending them a check for twelve thousand dollars. We are. We are. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's part of their MSBU fund. Yeah, they're, they're quarterly allowance. Yeah, they're special assessment collections. Yes. So I'm saying, if it's dysfunctional over there, who is overseeing this money? Chief, I uh, don't know that we have Curry? any authorization. David Curry. Yeah, they're supposed to, each, as far as I understand, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, each fire district has a board of some sort, you know? They they're do. supposed to at least. So we usually mail it to that board or the fire chief of that department, correct? Uh, best That's you know? correct, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, as far as like our responsibility, we, we just have to distribute the funds. So this is a quarterly payment we're making? It is. And we should have the results of this audit before the next payment? Uh, we should. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's, I won't give enough of it. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was just a question I had. Thank you, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> that's a good one. I'll move on, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Item 13. Community action submitted two service call invoices for a total of $450 for payment. Both invoices are for East Point Fire Survivors living in uh, RV trail, uh, travel trailer. These invoices will be paid from the donated funds managed by Community Action Agency. Ms. Angela Webster from Community Action will be on your November agenda to one of your November agendas to present an update on, on the funds, the balance and what they use and how many people they've helped. Uh, but for today, I just need authorization to pay these two invoices. So moved. Second. Got a motion on floor by Commissioner. Master, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I got Go a question ahead. on that one too, please. Uh, when we're taking care of these uh, East Point fire survivors living in an RV travel trail, mm -hmm. when are they supposed to get a new home? This, uh, the one, it's actually the same one, they are on the list with Ms. Belcher. Did she leave already? They're on her list to get a new home okay. uh, coming up. Yes. So this is really a temporary fix yes, until the new home comes yes, in. Exactly. Okay. Yes. That's, that's all I have. And, and until we know how long, you know, exactly when the home comes in. Right. You know, that's okay. It. They didn't never give them a deadline on 
when well, they're supposed they to be completed with all of them? No, and um, I'm hoping if you'd like me to, I can ask Mr. Belcher to come back when Angela comes, so it's kind of a joint presentation. So basically you have a completed list of both who CDBG has helped, has helped or intends to help, and who community action. How about just submitting the information? That works yeah. too. You're talking about an hour long discussion. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. There's the last, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. But the last time I heard, she ain't helped with five people. I thought it was 30 something people that needed a home, but some of them don't qualify and all okay. that. I'll get it. Yeah, that's a lot of bit, two hours. So I, what I'm saying is we need to request the information be sent to yourself and you distribute it to the board so we don't have to go through that discussion. That discussion. Okay. Because it takes so long and gets so complicated. And I sure will. And that's something we they should have been doing anyway, letting the board know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, you know, keep us informed. I will. I'll request that's this we, list. That's when trouble started by not communicating. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Okay, item number 14. I received an email from Ms. Sharon Ryder resigning as the county's designee on the Wilderness Coast Governing Board. As the board is aware, the county's library is part of the WILE system, which provides resources and benefits for the library system. Rather than appointing another designee to the seat, the board may want to consider appointing a commissioner to the seat. Commissioner Bolt has expressed an interest on serving on the WILE governing board. I make a motion, Mr. Burt, sit on it. Second. I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Masters, second by Commissioner Perry. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Let's pass unanimous. Thank you. Item 15, and most of everything as we move forward here, Commissioners, these are more informational items, not action items. So at any time, if we were running late, we could have deferred. On Friday, I met with Mr. Rick Harder and Mr. Joss Adams to discuss the Living Shoreline Project. Ms. Jenna Harper and Ms. Kim Wren, both of Aner staff, and Joe Taylor, Franklin Primus, were also at the meeting. <coughs> Mr. Harder and Mr. Adams first appeared at your July 2nd meeting to present and discuss the Living Shoreline Stability Project with the board. On Friday, we discussed stakeholder and agency meetings, background, investiga background investigations, seagrass mappings, habitat suitability and materials evaluation study and coastal conditions analysis. There will be four public meetings, which I suggested are held at different locations throughout the county, and three agency meetings. The agency meetings will be a perfect opportunity to discuss some of the concerns raised at the July 2nd meeting, such as deterring the consumption of oysters that may grow at these locations and reserving appropriate access for fishermen casting nets or floundering. As these meeting dates are confirmed, I will inform the board as there will have to be adequate notification that two or more commissioners will probably attend these meetings. Mr. Chairman, can I make a comment, please? Yeah. Uh, just so the board is aware, I don't know the full import of what I'm going to tell you, but as your representative on ARPC, they have informed us that the November meeting is going to be about possibly how this will be funded as well. So we think we've not only found the, the money for design, but the ARPC has found money for funding of this project as well. But I'll know more in November and I'll be bringing it back to you guys. And if I may, Mr. Chairman, so at the agency meetings, what I'm referring to, all of the state agencies are going to be there, FWC, DACs, so uh, especially at Commissioner Parrish, you know, he was very concerned that we don't take a PR hit. And I've, I've repeated this to them over and over again. We don't take a PR hit from someone eating an oyster from where the oyster catcher is located, get sick, you know, and then we get blasted and we can't sell oysters and the restrictions come down, and, you know. So that's the perfect time for everybody to come together and figure out how can we protect ourselves from that, you know, and in what manner. And I know C Commissioner Massey very talked about the, the access for the cast, people mm -hmm. casting their nets, people floundering. So that's, that's uh, again, you know, that's when we can discuss that. And that's why I say it's, this is one of those times when we're going to need, I'm going to have to, to declare that more than one commissioner will be there at these meetings publicly because I think all you need to be there, to be very honest with you, um, you know, well, maybe agency meeting. I don't know. Maybe they can make their make project work without, without doing the oyster thing. 
I mm -hmm. mean, do you ever try that? Well, we bring it up at the agency meetings That'd because be they, good, you know, you know, people gonna do the, what they want, and you can tell them not to eat that. That you know, it, it gonna hurt them. But somebody sooner or later they gonna try it. Mm -hmm. And whoever be responsible, I don't. It's not they fault, our fault. No, it's the one who done it. Mm -hmm. but you can't tell people. You can tell them, but some people just hard headed. They gonna do it. Like, but like, I, I, it ought to be some kind of way they can use another farm. Like harvesting in a closed area, for instance. Yeah. You know, the same, oh, yeah. same thing. You, it's closed, but it's that's closed. not they gonna know stop. It. You know. <clears throat> But yeah, I'm gonna try one, and they they gonna try it. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's some kind of other. I don't know whether that's cheaper. Or, well, it's. I ask them to look into it. Do they have another source to do it without the oysters? They well, might have. They might. Have. Well, these oysters, Mr. Chairman, I know. if I might, these oysters just form there. Yeah. They don't plant them or anything. They just form. They. Mm -hmm. uh, Attached to the substrate that might be yeah. used. Yeah. You, you should see this thing, this, this spray, this product going to use to stick in the water. You know, one looks like a lollipop. It's <laughs> so actually, I'm going to go hit, hit you guys with my little Caribbean accent here with born and raised. So the things are like a lot of braids, they look like dreadlocks. So one of them they actually call Rasta. So they, that's what they call it, like a Rastafarian, you know, with the dreads. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. And they have them formed loose, they have them formed like a lollipop, and they, basically they're oyster catchers. So, mm -hmm. uh, Chairman, that's what it's designed to do, to yeah. catch the oysters there. So that's that's why it's very important for the entire board to be there at these agency meetings. Well, yeah. it ought to be a job for somebody to well, keep the oysters got, off. You're just going to have to keep correct signage out there mm -hmm. and, and yeah. tell mm -hmm. people, you know, that those oysters that they're trying to catch are going to be used for water quality. Mm -hmm. Uh, as, as stuff runs off the highway and into these breakwaters and living shorelines, they call them. It's for water quality only. It's not for, for consumption purposes. Purpose. So it's just got to be good signage. Yes, sir. And guess yeah, what? but them, it'll well, be a good. It'll yeah. <laughs> it it be a good job for somebody to take them off. Yeah, that's right. Keep a, that's, keep them working. That's my one main concern about living shorelines is, is, yeah. is that fact right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so where are we? 16. They've been sure. You formed the board that the county's consultant, Lankin Consulting, has completed the application for the Florida Department of Emergency Management 2019 Hurricane Michael Hurricane State Recovery Grant Program proposal for St. George Island Emergency Beach Berm Project. The overall cost of this project is approximately 1.2 million and includes 3,850 feet linear feet of protective dune sand, native dune vegetation, sand fencing, engineering, design permitting, and management. The estimated timeline has the project close out by June, June 1st, 2020. That meets that deadline. Mr. Langton and his staff has been in con constant communication with Mr. Pierce and I throughout the application process. So, and I, I, I meant to, I'll, I'll send it later, a copy of that application that was submitted already to the state. That's been signed and submitted because we have to meet that deadline. Uh, 17, running for the Bay event <coughs> on the board. Running for the Bay Marathon event will be this Sunday, October 20th. This event did not take place last year due to Hurricane Michael. I've received a certificate of insurance that I'll forward to the clerk and Attorney Schuler. And Mr. Mark Henderson, the race director, will leave a cleanup refundable deposit with the county on the Friday, this Friday, that will be held until after the race route is inspected to make sure it's clean and clear. As with past events, this is a weekend long event that benefits restaurants, hotels, and other local businesses. County deputies and police officers are also hired to provide security and traffic control. <laughs> Item 18, uh, Aquaculture Lease Application. The Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, your Division of Aquaculture, has forwarded to the county a new aquaculture dock lease application which was submitted to DAX. The department is processing the application and part of the process is accepting written comments until November 3rd. After reviewing the application, send me your questions and or comments which I will forward to DAX. Due to the size of the file, I have to provide a link to download it because it's a large file, it would have slowed down downloading your overall packet. Any comments you sent to me, I will forward right away. 
Item 19. <coughs> The counties receive a notice from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection that GFP Timberlands LL, LLLP has applied for a permit for the Lime Rock Mine north of Carabel, known as Carabel Rock LLC, Rock Landing Aggregate Mine. DSP is accepting comments on this permit until October 23rd. Mr. Kierington, your county planner stated, if the county objects, it has to state how the proposal does not meet the county statutory requirements under the Florida Coastal Management Plan and offer suggestions, suggestions on how the project could come into compliance. Forward your comments and questions to me as soon as possible. This, app, this file is also too large to attach to my report as I've provided a link for it. I've also sent you, what I took the file, I sent it to Clint Davis at Forestry for his opinion on this project because I know it's been an ongoing thing here with, uh, with mines, uh, you know, and uh, activating these mines. And I've just for sent you Clint's response uh, that he responded to me this morning on that file. So let me know what you guys, what direction you want, want me to go in with this. Uh, what, what is, I see where you sent this out. And then you asked a question and he responded back. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, if I might. Go ahead. Sorry. This, this is the in holding of private land within the boundaries of the forest, the same area approaching the board about our stance that we have talked and previously still remains the same. Man, the, the last sentence yeah. don't, don't make much sense. Well, me. I think what he was written. trying to say is, is that their stance is still the same, you know, in reference to they the forestry is not in favor in favor of mining you know even though it's private property they still their egress ingress and egress still has to come through the forest because they have no roads i don't think they have any access as far as i know what, what about the citizens uh complaints of groundwater contamination uh, so these these comments made by the public in a, in a public meeting is the way i think the board ought to respond to okay so i so, so a letter stating all past comments based on uh, some of the discussion yeah. this board has had. And okay. A lot of them were negative as far as people's groundwater drinking, drinking water. Because mm -hmm. they don't have public water out there in these woods. Okay. Know, so I'm sure William knows more of them than I do that live in that area. Uh, I think the comments should be what, what direction the board have already gotten from the public and their determination is made. And then the state does whatever they want to, of course. But I think we should submit those comments because you have until what November first to make comment. No, this one. No, no sir. Unfortunately, this one is next week. October well, 23rd. I mean, we need to get that done. Now. Mm -hmm. I want to make a motion that, that uh, the county staff send a letter refer to the comments that were made in the public meeting from groundwater contamination and all the other concerns and send that in. Okay. And Michael, sir, <laughs> don't we have some standards of suggestion from the state of Florida of, as how they see forestry managed and access and egress to this to all of this? I, mean, I could talk to Clint, sir, and find out Mr. Davis and see what he says to include that language in the letter. If that's what you're sure kind of asking so. me to do. Yeah, I got a motion on approved by Commission Affairs. Second. Second by Commission of Both. Why don't people mess with us and they got to make the decision? <laughs> yeah. They don't make sense. They're going to do what they want to do. Mm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes you now. All right, commissioners, if I may, item 20. Um, Ms. Lori Schweitzer received notification from Florida Housing that the 2016 2017 annual report submitted last month has been approved. If you have any questions regarding the report, I encourage you to contact Ms. Schweitzer. It's only that you submitted three, but there was only one closeout year, which was 2016 2017. So I just want to get in the record that it was approved. Uh, item 21 uh, inform you that FDOT has published their tentative 2021. 2025 work plan for Franklin County. Mr. Kierington, after reviewing the plan, stated that the only he only observed one new county project, which is the widening and resurfacing of Highway 67 north of Crooked River from the bridge to Forest Road 166. It's approximately two miles in length. 
I should have included a copy of that plan in my report, and I will. I'll send it to you. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, Michael, what, what was the year in the plan that that was? Do you know? I'll have to look at it. Okay. See the plan. Mark, I've okay. got this tomorrow, but I'll get it to you right away today, sir. <laughs> okay. And finally, Mr. Schuler, um, 2020 census. I've been in discussion with Ms. Evelyn Ramirez of the U.S. Census Bureau of the need, on the need for Franklin County to move forward with the complete count committee formation and workshop training date. In order to create a successful uh, CCC, members should be a reflection of those living in the county so that the committee makeup should include leaders and members from faith-based, business, education, migrant, media, education, and healthcare sectors. Ms. Ramirez also suggests at least one elected official serve on this committee. She would like this committee form and train at the end of October. Good luck with that. I'm asking that you reach out to your constituents and ask those that are willing to serve to contact me as soon as possible. The quicker I get this committee together, the better we'll be at. I think both cities, are, both cities already have their committees set up and maybe have even been trained, so I need to How get on the ball with this. Um, she's had five to seven members would be a good number. Right, um, I don't think there's any decision making with this. It's just people that train will take the lead. So if I get someone from each of your districts, that'll be really helpful. And Commissioner, that's it for me this morning. Okay. That's Who is this elected official you're talking about? Huh? Who is this elected official? Well, she, she recommends an elected official, but <clears throat> if I can get others in there, you know, uh, I'm going to see. She didn't say we have to have one. She just recommends it. Let's see if I can get at least one person from each of your districts to serve and see where we go from there. I'll probably create two at large members. And we but we're not going to be meeting no more before the end of October. So how are you going to? Okay. I'll try my best. I'll do my best to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She didn't say you couldn't put county attorneys on it. No, it says elected. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just tease him. Yeah. <laughs> You will call me Mr. Billable Hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, he retired. <coughs> oh, you went there, not me. I know. And that's it for me, Commissioner. Do you have anything else? Any, anybody got anything else for Mr. Maroon? Just I remember this new software that you're talking about getting for the developing the agenda. Right. Yes, sir. You had told me that that software then allows you to put the documents that support an agenda item right under the agenda item, so we're not scanning. Yes. That's, that, I, to me, I, is I a neat thing. I didn't expand on that discussion no, because I kind of wanted great. you to approve it first, and then I'll hit you the stickers, the, the shock after. But basically, uh, there'll be a change in the format of the agenda. So mm -hmm. basically, where you see my name on this paper, all my report oh, yeah. items will that, be under that's that. That's great. But Technology. we're not having to chase those things anymore. Yeah, so there won't be the agenda and my report. Right. It'll be one document, basically. So it, it'll help you with the flow. If that, if that can get away with saying that, yeah. <laughs> but there'll be a slight change, so uh, we, we'll work together, myself, Ms. Hines, and whoever else. Anything else for Mr. Maroon? Okay, keep up the good work. Next on the agenda be Mr. T. Thomas Michael Schuler. Mr. Brown. Counter Tanner. Mr. Brown, do you have a display for this next presentation? The whole house, the easement request. Let me check my email. I'm sorry. No, no. If you don't, let's don't. Yeah. The commissioner's is. attached to my report is a black and white drawing showing a request for an easement on St. George Island that was uh, forwarded to me by Mr. Marone. Uh, the necessity for this is that the board had previously approved a, a commercial site plan on St. George Island, but they don't have enough room on their site for their aerobic system, so they bought property across the alley from their property. They are requesting, as others have in the past, the permission of the county to get a 10-foot wide, about 30-foot long utility easement going across one of your alleys on St. George Island so they can connect this commercial site plan to an aerobic system that's across the alley from their uh, commercial site plan. And generally speaking, this is located at 3rd Street East and East Gulf Beach Drive on St. George Island. On the north side of this is East Pine Avenue. The alley, of course, would be uh, in between East Pine and uh, East Gulf Beach Drive. Uh, I've looked at this. Uh, typically, the 
uh, requirements that we would have is that they indemnify the county and hold us harmless if there are any damages or environmental contamination that if the county has a, a public works project which requires them for some reason to relocate or temporarily remove and then reinstall their utilities they would do so at the county's request and at their expense uh, but otherwise the utility easement would essentially be there uh, in perpetuity so my recommendation is as we have in the past to allow this commercial site plan to move forward as i've described it to you here this morning motion to approve Second. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Jones, second by Commissioner Master. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passes unanimous. Commissioners, do, do any of you have any questions for me concerning the non action items on my report? If Anybody got any questions for Mr. Shooter? I would give you this update on the item concerning um, Alligator Drive and the potential of purchasing some property from a private citizen down there. I sent the letter. I gave them a deadline of yesterday to let me know if they were interested in moving forward with an appraisal process. And if I did not receive a notification from them by yesterday, I would presume, this is all stated in my letter, I would presume that they were not interested in moving forward in negotiating with the county for the purchase of that property and I've not received any, either an email or a phone call or a letter, so I'm going to presume that is a dead issue, unfortunately. But I thought I would get that in the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Mr. All Chairman, right. before you move on to the Commissioner <coughs> comments, sir, I'll uh, clarify, uh, well, not, not clarify. L let me say this one thing. Uh, uh, the superintendent, Ms. Ms. Moses, the reason she didn't attend, apparently she left, the, her staff left a voicemail on my phone uh, yesterday saying that uh, she'd received uh, the letter from Attorney Shula with that list of items, so she wasn't prepared to come today. So I just want to clarify that it wasn't her, it was me. I didn't check my voicemail yesterday afternoon. So that's where that confusion came up. And my next item is don't forget 130 is a presentation from uh, Mr. Uh, uh, from Alliant, uh, TMH, Mr. Jim Coleman. So we'll start. I will convert the room so that uh, the two tables will be together because your Ween Board of Directors will sit below you here facing the audience also as he makes his presentation. That starts at 1.30 sharp. I'll make more coffee. Okay. Commissioner comment. Um, Mr. Chairman, just mm -hmm. a question from one of my constituents. Yeah. Um, with regard to the potential purpose purchase of alligator drive properties yes sir. Um, the point was since the road has been established and the building is going to proceed for repairing rebuilding the road the first point was what is the purpose of further purchasing those properties uh, what will we do with those properties after we buy them and the other one it was the constituent was concerned about extracting taxable property from our property tax rolls when we buy these properties and I just needed some comment on those thoughts uh, mr. chairman if, if I might I think the question was probably directed at me but that is a Alan Pierce directed project I, I'm yep. aware okay. that the project is ongoing and it is for the purpose of using public funds from the state to purchase uh, right-of-way property but as far as anything beyond that I, I think those questions need to be directed to Mr. Pierce I really don't know the answer I could hazard a guess but you know we're not in the business of guessing okay okay any more any more commissioner comment 11 o'clock meeting the gentleman good job Mr. Morrow thank you 